If our time in Nikkei has taught us anything, it's the fact that there are many facets of this world that we still can't quite fully grasp. As I've said countless times before, there are many mysteries that shroud this world in darkness, whispers of the truth lingering barely out of the commander's reach. For us as players, we can fill in a few of these gaps, and Second Affection was one such event that gave us much more context about periods in between chapters. I'm here today to briefly cover both the story itself, where they fit into our main story overall, and the importance of the Second Affection timeline. If you're new, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Pyrex, and I'm your one-stop shop for Nikkei lore. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing to the channel as it helps our content reach a wider audience. And without further delay, let's get right into it. Second Affection covers several key transition points in the story. These key transitions take place in between chapters 14 and 17, and lead all the way up to chapter 25 in the main campaign. Though it's not a linear timeline covering all events which transpired, it's enough information for us to piece together Moderna's journey following her escape from the central government's grasp. After being handed off to Pioneer, Modernia soon finds herself before three unknown figures. Pioneer, upon her waking, try to calm her down and urge her to follow them as the Ark is no longer a safe place for her to stay. Do keep in mind, at this time, Modernia is still rather childlike. She is still fresh out of her unfortunate encounter with Chatterbox and doesn't fully understand the situation that she's in. Modernia still wants to return to the Commander because, as we all know, the only thing that survived Chatterbox's deep corruption was the fondness she felt towards the commander. Despite her pushback, Snow White and Pioneer know it's best for Modernia to be guided to a safer place that she can reside in, a kingdom where she can be cared for and tended to. When stopping for a brief moment to rest, Modernia slowly begins to trust Pioneer a bit more. In turn, she learns many lessons from them, despite picking up some bad habits along the way. Above all else, one thing is shown clear with her time spent with these pilgrims, and that's the fact that, no matter what, they always will be there to protect and defend their comrades. Even though they spend most of their time separated, when they reunite, it's a group effort to make sure everything doesn't fall into disarray. Even the smaller moments on their journey hold great significance not only for Modernia, but for the members of Pioneer also. One of the biggest instances being Snow White sharing her food with Modernia, Sure, this may seem like just a funny gesture to the average viewer, since Snow White is very food-centric. <sighs> Take it. Oh. Huh? Can I eat this too? Yes. Thanks! <laughs> Snow White. However, it has more underlying factors besides that. Snow White always had an attachment with food, and much like many people in real life, it could be a source of comfort for her. Whether that comfort be the residual nature from her original form as Small White, or a form of coping for all the things that she's been through, the fact still stands that it has high importance to her. For Snow White to relinquish her form of comfort in order to aid another speaks volumes on how much she truly cares for anyone she comes into contact with. These moments also help Modernia to grow too albeit in a very unconventional and somewhat unhealthy way. Eventually, Rapunzel and Scarlet both part ways with Modernia, leaving Snow White as the sole pilgrim to guide her to Crown's kingdom. Funnily enough, this is after Modernia had a bit too much to drink the night before, resulting in a hangover and a heavy urge to see the commander again. It's kind of funny, really. Hangovers are still able to affect Nikes due to their composition, not tampering heavily with the brain. Accompanying a very belligerent and whiny Modernia, Snow White presses onward, showing her the path towards her new home on the surface. Upon arriving, Modernia is greeted by Chime, who, despite being upset with Snow White's delay getting there, welcomes Modernia into the kingdom with open arms. Though Modernia seems to be confused at first, she quickly is shown to her quarters, which have been graciously prepared by Crown and Chime. Over the course of the next few days, Chime grows irritated at Modernia's sudden inability to communicate with her. Bringing her food, checking in on her, even small mundane tasks are met with no response by Modernia, and Chime seems to be at her wit's end. Instead of giving up on Modernia entirely, Crown decides to give it a shot to coax her out of her shell. Up until this point in the story, personally, I can't say I was too much of a fan of Crown's character. 
Sure, the only introduction we had to her was in chapter 25. However, how she displayed herself in those chapters left a lot to be desired for me as a player. Her mannerisms, despite being considered a queen, seemed lackluster at the time. But I can say certainly after this side story that Crown has grown on me as a player. Crown's approach to helping Modernia is quite unconventional to say the least. She decides to prop a chair in Modernia's room, silently sipping on tea alongside her. When night falls, she takes her leave. But something peculiar happens. Modernia isn't choosing to ignore Crown or Chime out of malice. But instead, it's obvious she's still deeply wounded by her departure from the commander. <sighs> <laughs> day in and day out, this cycle repeats until Modernia finally breaks the silence. She has the misconception that everyone feels irritated by her, and thus, she feels she's hated and only drags others down. Crown's approach is direct and straightforward, stating that currently, Modernia is indeed useless. However, Crown will help her to stand again. Modernia expresses that, since she's useless, she'll leave and yearns to meet with the commander once more. Despite her thoughts of being rejected, Crown instead leads her out and ventures off on Trom with the White Knights accompanying her. It is then that the major turning point of Modernia's character comes to light. Modernia has the sudden realization of her selfish actions, but most of all, the result of executing such desires. The lesson here is that Modernia is finally understanding that some things she desires, no matter how great the urge is, is best left unattended. This was a prime example choosing to turn back and not put anyone she loves in danger. Rightfully so, Modernia feels abandoned, but in this moment, she also understands it's for her own safety. Through the talk they had on the way back, Modernia also learns the true wishes of both Crown and Chime, both having such selfless wishes which benefit those around them, and in turn, benefit themselves too. After some normal shenanigans, the blissful lull of the kingdom is brought to a screeching halt, Fractures are closing in fast on the kingdom, and not just soldier classes, but lords and tyrants alike. With Crown currently falling ill due to high alpha particle concentration, Modernia takes a stand to defend her new home. Once the battle is nearing its end and Modernia is at her limit, all hope seems lost when a familiar voice pierces the darkness. Onward, Trom! It's important to note here that upon arrival to the kingdom, Snow White gave Crown some cases of Vapaus should Marion go erratic once more. This also explains the white light which encapsulated Marion's darkness in Chapter 14, this being the pioneer's last ditch effort to contain and suppress Modernia from using her heretic form. After the battle, Modernia has a realization, the fact that protecting one another and relying on one another is the best way to ensure everyone's survival. The more people share and grow with one another, the greater their resolve becomes. And this is where everything takes a turn. A black light begins to envelop Modernia, although this isn't the heretic transformation Snow White had warned them about. Instead, we see Modernia donning an entirely new outfit, equipped with new armor. This sequence, however, holds a deeper importance in the overall story. If you recall back to Nihilister's Bond story, it is revealed that all heretics, much like Nikkei's, undergo a transformation into their new form based on their true desires. For Nihilister, it's the urge to fight and burn everything in her path, while for Liberalio, it's the yearning for peace and tranquility on the surface. No matter if the intent is destructive or tranquil, the result is all the same, the shift from the Nikkei's original form to their heretic one. For Modernia, her entire memory was basically factory reset thanks to Chatterbox, and due to this, she was an entirely clean slate, one who had unclear desires and goals. Through the actions of the Commander, Counters, Pioneer, and the White Knights, she finally realized her true desires, these being to defend and protect those that she loves. This is Modernia's true heretic form, and one that is finally at peace with her inner self, realizing the full potential that she now has. Moving forward, this poses a very interesting question. If Marion, through corruption, became Modernia, only to revert back from the darkness, can other heretics do the same? Well, it just so happens that in the next set of chapters, there is another heretic that is in a similar position. Another candidate, perhaps, that could fight alongside humanity once more. 
Did you enjoy Second Infection? And what was your favorite part? Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Tomorrow is an extremely big update for Nike, and I'll be covering it all live on my Twitch. So drop a follow if you'd like to hop into the discussion we're going to have when the update releases. Link will be down in the description below. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all in the next video. Janet.